With the holidays approaching, this year we decided we didn't want to go with the usual grocery store chocolate advent calendar. I decided it would be fun to try and make a laser cut advent calendar with my new longer ray 510 watt. This is my first real project with the laser cutter since receiving it and testing it in my last video. I'm definitely not smart enough to design something like this, at least using a laser cutter, but I knew there was a resource on the internet. So I went on Etsy and searched for laser cut advent calendar files. I found a design that my family liked from a store called Toolbox Turkey. I'll include a link in the description. I purchased the download which included several different file types and for different material thicknesses. Because I'm going to cut this using Lightburn, I wasn't able to use most of the file types that came with the download, but it did include a PDF which I was able to import and use. The plywood that I'm using for this is 3mm, so I made sure I used the 3mm file. I'm not affiliated with Toolbox Turkey at all, but I will say that their plans came out great. Every single thing fit together really well. In addition to the laser cut files, there were also nicely illustrated assembly instructions. Next, I opened up Lightburn and I imported the PDF. This laid the entire project cut lines over my grid area. I isolated each section one by one and ended up creating 15 different files for all my different cuts. We planned to make the calendar dates out of gold vinyl instead of having them cut out of the drawer faces. Removing the number cut paths from the drawer faces was as easy as highlighting and deleting them. Lastly, I added a label so I wouldn't cut something twice or accidentally miss parts. I'm still learning Lightburn, but on this project I figured out how to create different layers. All the drawer faces are going to be cut, but I only want to engrave the label. I highlighted what I wanted to engrave and then clicked the layer button on the bottom. This gave me separate cut layers with which I could assign separate instructions. I set the laser to cut at 200 millimeters per second with 100% power. After changing the mode on the engraving that I wanted to be filled instead of as a line, I set it to 3000 millimeters per second at 75% power. This was a lot more powerful than it needed to be. Then I saved this as my first cut file and I moved on to the next one. I did try to consolidate some of the smaller parts together on single sheets of plywood to save material. With the advent calendar plans divided into 15 separate files, I was able to begin cutting out the pieces. Once the Ray 5 was powered up and connected, I checked my frame. I always do this to make sure that my material is properly positioned so it actually gets cut. I also made sure that the laser was the proper height over my plywood. And with that done, I clicked start. Right away I could tell something was wrong with my speed. The laser was moving way too fast, so I went ahead and stopped the machine. I had created these files on one computer inside a nice warm house and moved them out to a very cold garage with a thumb drive. It turned out that the laser speed on both my layers had somehow dramatically increased during the transfer. After I made the necessary corrections, everything worked as it was supposed to. Using any laser engraver will create a lot of smoke, and until I build a fume hood, this was my solution. It actually worked really well. I still haven't added an air assist to this machine, but even without it, the Ray 5 10 watt went through the 3mm plywood like a hot knife through butter. Once I got all the settings dialed in, cutting every piece out was as easy as pressing start and walking away. As I discovered in my last video, the Ray 5 flame sensor works awfully well, so I didn't have a problem letting this go unattended. Until I get the air assist pump, the cuts on plywood are going to be a little dirty. To clean everything up, I used some 220 grit sandpaper on an orbital sander. This worked pretty well, but I'm planning on painting and staining all the different parts, so they didn't need to be that clean. I used regular wood glue on each of the 24 individual boxes and the 8 corner pieces. Like I said earlier, the joints fit together perfectly. Some masking tape was all that was needed to hold everything together while the glue dried. Pre-assembled the wintry scenes that go on either side of the advent calendar before painting them. Because these are going to be spray painted, this seemed like the easiest way to do it. I also pre-assembled all the little tiny pieces that make up the hinges and latches. These parts fit together very tightly, but I was able to get everything together without a single piece breaking. 
I masked off all the assembly tabs for all the parts that were going to be spray painted. As tight as all the tolerances were, I didn't want to add any more thickness to my material. For all the white parts, I used a simple paint plus primer spray. I sponged on a dark blue acrylic for the areas that will go behind the snowy scenes. After the blue paint dried, my wife added snowflakes using a toothbrush. I pre-stained all the exterior surfaces. This was a lot less messy than trying to stain everything after the box was glued together. Some of the edges on the inside would have still been visible, so I made sure to stain those now too. For the corner pieces and hardware, I used a darker stain to give me a little contrast. While I assembled the frame of the advent calendar, my wife painted the drawer faces. She also took care of the outside of the box because she is far better at this type of thing than I am. With most of the paint and stain work done, I started final assembly. For many of these larger parts, I used wood glue, and then to avoid having to use any kind of tape or clamp, I added a little bit of Starbond medium to secure the joint while the wood glue dried. I found that the spray paint had tightened the tolerances on my snowy scene pieces just a little bit. I very, very carefully tapped them on with a mallet. I used a silhouette machine to cut out the date numbers with some gold vinyl. I pretty much just eyeballed the placement. For the final finishing step, I sprayed some satin clear coat on all the painted or stained surfaces. When the clear coat had dried, I added all the hinge pins and latches. Because these pieces move, I didn't want to put them on until after all the finish had dried. The hinge pin keepers were each secured with a drop of CA glue. And with that, the drawers were put in and the advent calendar was complete just in time for Christmas. This was a fun and easy project and I'm very happy with the results. I think the product is definitely better than the standard chocolate advent calendar found in a grocery store. If you're still here, I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy holidays, and as always, thanks for watching.